Good morning, everybody. Um, happy Wednesday. We'll give it a few minutes. We've got a, we started a hair early today. All right. So we'll get started here. We have two options and I'm going to let you guys choose. So it's going to be your vote decides what we uh, go over here. I was going to um, discuss hidden fees and projects, um, which we could do next week if we want. Um, or um, this last week, Chris was actually there. He invited me to speak. Thank you at the San Diego Association of Realtors New Laws event. And um, I've been given Gary Geiler's presentation on ADUs in the city of San Diego. Um, I could actually go over that with you guys. So it'd be if between if you guys want to go over um, hidden fees on projects, or if you want to go over the presentation that Gary Geiler gave um, at this last week's New Laws event, um, it's up to you guys. So David, how should we do voting on this? Uh, I I think it's too much work to put a poll together. Uh, why don't we have everybody go off mute and choose? Right, could anybody Chris, feel strong? We got we got one for hidden fees. We got two for hidden fees. Two for hidden fees. Uh, uh, hidden fees going once. Going twice. Oh, great. Oh, okay, Bethany. <laughs> Bethany wants to buy one, get one free. We have two and a, we have two and a half votes. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to go over hidden fees. Um, and next week I will go over um, Gary Geiler's presentation. So you will have to sit on the edge of your seats for an entire week. Um, so... Hidden fees on projects. Um, this was one actually David sent me a video about it. Um, gosh, probably last Friday um, on Instagram of a guy going over hidden fees. And um, as somebody who obviously has done development projects, I remember doing my first development project and trying to figure out like what the costs were going to be. Um, so also, by the way, is it too loud where I'm at right now? No. Okay, got it. Cool. Sorry, I'm sitting outside of a tech campus here in uh, La Jolla. So there's a lot of fees that go in the process and everyone thinks, hey, like I got to pay my permit fees. Like that's that's your big cost. And it really goes a couple different ways. Um, so you do have your permit fee, which is strictly the fee you pay for your permit to be released. Prior to that, and what people don't read, realize is that you have your permit processing fees. So the first fee that you're going to have that you have to consider is your actual permit process and planning fees. So these are the fees that are paid for them to actually review the project um, that you have. I mentioned um, last week when I was up there, it is confusing for people up front because when you go to get a permit, my mind, I thought I gave it to one person and they looked at it. And they told me, you know, okay, this is good. This is bad. And I thought they looked at the whole project and that's not actually how it works. 
you have different divisions within the building department that do different reviews. So you're going to have planning that verifies that your project stays with the plan. You're going to have the MEP if you have an R2 project, R2 being building code, not zoning. And that means it's three or more units connected. Um, you're going to have MEP, which is mechanical, electrical, plumbing. And that's how all of that works in between a building. One thing to think of that you don't consider when you're going into a project is like, if you're putting gas in a wall and it's shared between two units, how are they protected? How does it work? How does the building exhaust any fumes that come from it? All of these different things that affect how, how a project's done. So mechanical, electrical, plumbing is another one. Structural is another one. And structural is the most confusing to me and I think to everybody else, because when you think structural, you think, hey, like, is the building going to fall over? That's part of what structural does. The other two things that structural do that are the most important is they determine your life and safety. So like accesses, ingress, egress, how people navigate your building. And they also, for that same thing, do ADA compliance and review. So they're the ones that are going to say, hey, this is how um, this unit is ADA compatible and this is what you have to do. Now, one thing to remember is that the ADA doesn't review your compliance. They set the rules. Structural confirms it's in place. It is still on you to ensure that it does stay in place. The ADA can come after you if someone places a suit. So having that structural review to make sure it's correct is key. ADA compliance comes in as soon as you have three or more units connected, just so you guys understand. So that's structural. We have fire. They're going to make sure that your hose pools work right. You have the appropriate water pressure. You have the appropriate sensors. You have the appropriate um, addressing. So they're actually going to say like where your numbers need to go. So the fire department knows where you are. Next, you have addressing. They give you your actual address number. They're easy. You have finance. They give you your finance information so you can actually pay your fees, which we're going to be going over. And then um, from there, there's several other. You could have a coastal review. Um, you could have a community review. All these different sections that go into place. So you turn those in. They each process. And they have what are called cycles. And you can actually close out a cycle on planning, but still have it open on structural so you could do cycle one closed with your planning department, but go two more cycles with structural before they're done. And what they all do is they ensure that as you go down, you're getting stamped off and finished in each section. So as you get them all, you get one final set, you go in, they stamp you, they give you your final approval. So now just before you have your final approval, they're gonna send you what is called your um, certificate for your school fees. This is a fee you pay per every square foot of new construction that is livable, not your hallways, not your garages, nothing that's not livable, that you pay to the school district. So you're not paying it to anybody else but the school district. Right now in the state of California, I believe the maximum fee for school fees is $4.92 per school district. Um, I'd have to verify that could have gone up over $5 finally. Um, and you're going to have to look at it from a couple angles. So if you're in city of San Diego, you just go to San Diego um, Union School District and they have one fee that you pay that goes to elementary, middle and high school. When you're in National City, you pay a fee that is to the elementary school and middle school and then a fee that's to the high school. Between the two, they can't be over 492. So you have that fee that you pay. Then from there, you have your actual permit fee. So that's how much you're paying for the permit um, that's actually going to give you the piece of paper. And then the fee that gets everybody every time that is always overlooked is the water capacity fee. Water capacity is that these are all one-time fees. Um, Chris, I saw your question down there. Um, so these are one-time fees. Basically, Think of it as um, your membership into like a country club. It's like your fee you pay up front. Your annual renewal is your taxes. So you're still paying property taxes. So that's where it goes from there. Um, so now this water fee is designated by the size of your water meter and the number of units. San Diego, the average water fee is right around um, $4,000 right now. 
But if you get water in, what do you do with the water when it's done? You got to put it in the sewer. So they don't only have a water fee. They also have a sewer fee that ends up being around $3,300. And you have to pay this for every single unit. So you're paying that for every single unit. And then depending upon if you've separated these units or they're on one meter, you have to pay a water meter fee. Water meter fee ranges from 10,000 to as high as 150,000 if you're doing a big apartment complex um, fee that's paid for each water meter. Now we sub meter. So we pay for one large meter that's usually right around $27,000. And then we pay the water capacity fee based on every single unit. As you do multiple units, they allow you to multiply that fee by a fraction of the number. Um, and it's based on units per acre. And it usually ends up like a 10 plex on a 7,000 square foot lot. That's $2,500. You're going to pay right around 5,500 bucks instead of 7,300 bucks for that. That fee alone blows up more deals than 99% of the fees out there. So if you have a single family home, um, do these for... Sorry, do these fees, I'm going to start and check your question real quick here, Chris. Dave, could you read that question? It's not. Um, yeah, sorry. Do those fees revert onto the annual taxes for like the muni stuff? It's just different name, but the same intent. No, so they don't go onto your taxes. Just your standard property assessment is in place. So you're going to pay in and then you're just going to have your your regular assessment based on the value of the property that you pay that then is divided into all those different classes. Now you do still have obviously your water bill and your sewer bill for usage that you pay on those, but your buy-in to that is just, that's, it's a one and done on that. Um, one thing that's interesting, city and national city, um, your sewer fee is on your taxes. You don't pay it on your water bill. You pay your sewer fee on your taxes and um, I'm going to, since I can't ask everybody at once, I'm going to ask David, Hey, David, uh, how much do you think per day people pay for sewer in the city of national city? In the city of national city per day, I want a 365, uh, 75 cents. Dollar and 31 cents a day. Wow. Which is pretty crazy. Um, in my opinion. So yeah. If you own a building in a national city and you're charging back for water, it's very, 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 very important that you add a cost for sewer and that you have the verbiage in your project that you pay water sewer when you are billing people. As somebody that has a building down in national city, my first tenants, I didn't have in their bill that they were paying for water and sewer. So until they started moving out, I couldn't collect that sewer fee. So, and I found it because I got my first tax bill and I had that sewer bill on there. Um, little $9,000, $9,800 surprise at the end of the year. It was super fun. Um, so we fixed that. Um, so that's your water sewer fee. And then from there, you've built your project or you've designed your project. You have it all set up. Let's say you have a retaining wall and let's say you need to get power to it. You have an additional permit that you're not thinking two additional permits. You have a retaining wall permit in the city of San Diego. You have to get permits for your retaining walls if they're over three feet and it does not go onto your building permit and it is a separate inspection. So you have a separate inspection fee. Then you have to also tie in your right of way work, which is a completely separate permit as well. That then is tied to a bond based on the value of the work being created. So I'm going to drill into the street. I have to cut the street open tie into water and get my permit to do this, they're going to assess, there's a scale that civil engineers use that assesses how much this is going to cost. When they assess that value, I believe they added 10% margin onto it. They attach that to your actual permit. The city will request that you have a bond put in place prior to pulling your permit that allows them to call that bond if you break a water line, don't finish your project and they have to finish it. So they can actually finish the work for you with that bond money. So bonds range between two and a half to three and a half percent of the total value on an annualized basis, depending upon your credit. It is another thing you have to apply for. So this is an additional fee on top of it. Other investors will actually create bond accounts, drop the money in the account and leave it there. For most people, it makes more sense just to leverage and get the bond itself. 
So you're going to have that fee as well. Then as you go through the inspection process, you've, to, you've invested your money in the project. You're going to have a certain number of inspections that are included that come off each time you have an inspection on site. As you go through the process, you may be required to refill that account. So like my most recent project, they had us deposit another $10,000 into that account to make sure that we could complete all of our inspections on the property. So those are the hidden fees associated with a project. The biggest one being your water capacity fee. Your next one being your, um, I completely missed one. Oh my gosh, guys. There's development impact fees. <laughs> this is your fee that you pay per zone, per unit, for fire, water, and parks. City of San Diego, if you look up development impact fees, they vary across the board. The two most expensive places that have development impact fees in City of San Diego are North Park because it's attached to Balboa Park. So you pay for that fee. And uh, um, college area. David, could you take a gander how much you have to pay per fee on uh, that for um, North Park? So let's just say you're building a home in North Park, uh, how much do you pay on development impact fees for just one home, just for this one fee? I think, isn't a diff fee per door? It is per door, it is per door. It's per door and let's say 18 grand. 17,000, 17,000. Yeah, so close. So you can go into other parts of town and it's as low as $6,000. So when you're looking at this, if you're doing a 10 unit apartment complex, you're going to pay 17000 per door. Now, they have a set up a sliding scale, finally, that allows you to reduce the cost of this development impact fee based on the square footage of the unit. So when I was building my micro units in um, Southcrest, I was paying the same for a 400 square foot unit as somebody that built a 3,000 square foot house. They've now created a sliding scale that allows if you're building a single family home, to actually do it for a more expensive cost because of the square footage, where if you're building an apartment, you build it for less. So that's been very nice to have that change. Um, and then, sorry, there's one more fee. Um, <laughs> there's the inclusionary housing fee. If you are building more than three units, or if you are building three units, not more than three, three units or up, you pay a fee per square foot of unit built that is not affordable. So if you have a whole project that's not affordable, you would have to pay every square foot of fee. This fee is based on how many units you're doing and it goes up. I believe at the top end of the scale, it's $50 a square foot. Um, if you have no affordable housing in your project, if you're doing like a 50 unit project. So this is designed to entice builders to do at least some affordable project in their, in their building. So that way there's housing for it. But it is a major constraint, obviously, if you're building a tall building downtown and you have 500 units and let's say you're building 10,000, you're going to know you're going to build 100,000 square feet of building. You have to pay $50 a square foot in fees. That's going to be a $5 million permit cost for your inclusionary housing fee. So that one's one that can come up. So if you're building a project that's all market rent or market price, just realize that that's something that hangs you up. Um, and also, if you're wondering why everyone's building apartments instead of houses, there's your answer. So anybody have any questions? I know that was a lot of verbal vomit there for everybody. Um, but any questions, you can unmute yourself um, and we can go over those. What's the rough cost per square foot? or so-called soft costs, nothing soft about, yeah. No, there is nothing soft about those costs. Um, you, the, so it varies dramatically, Greg, because of all of these other things that can happen. So if you have the inclusionary housing fee, if you have all these things, it's gonna trigger it up. Additionally, as you do a larger project, your soft costs will actually go down. And then soft costs, we also include our cost of our carry. So I couldn't give you like a real number on that um, because 
it could be way off. If you're talking about one unit or if you're talking about 20, it's really something you have to dive into every single time. Uh, Naveen, go for it. Um, so if someone is new to this and doesn't have the experience that you have about the different fees, um, do you usually go first to the city and try to get as much information as you can about the, the different fees and you go from there? Uh, what's your kind of process as you get into a new area and you don't know about all these fees, the hidden fees that you unfold as you start working on a project? Yeah, the number one thing is you just got to find a professional in that area. And it's one of those things you got to just spend the money to have somebody that knows the area that's not going to not going to miss a fee because there are so many fees that are involved that are hidden. So it's even if you go to the city. So one thing to think about, the city is not charging you the sewer or water fee. So if something changes on that, they don't know it. It's just one of the things that they say, hey, you got to collect that. It's through PUD, which is part of the city, but it's not part. It, it's in development services, but it's not going to, they're just not going to know it. They're not going to know the school fees exactly because it's actually not their fee. They're just making sure that you get it. Um, and they're not going to be able to break down um, the inclusionary housing fee necessarily. Like I asked them for a fee schedule breakdown years ago and they're like, that's just not something we do. Which I was like, wait a second, you guys don't give me an estimate on fees. And they're like, no, we don't. Because um, going to Chris's question uh, in the chat, I do anticipate a fee increase every single June because it happens every single year. <laughs> so um, they generally write, raise the rates every single June across the board on everything. So um I would say your best bet is to find a local architect, see if they have a consultant that can help you on fees or civil engineer. But it's you really got to go to the source because one of the best and worst things about development is that it's really hard to do and there's not clear answers. That makes it less competitive for people that are in it, but it also makes it very hard for people to jump into. So if you miss one of these dumb fees, does the city or county just send you a bill? No, they won't give you, um, Nate, they will not give you your permit if you haven't paid all these fees. So just before you pull your permit, they put either a tier one or a tier two hold on your project until they have proof of all these fees being paid. Any other questions? I think you're muted, Dave. Do you predict any new fees or fee increases increases in 2024? I just I just answered that, D. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I'm really good at listening. Dave is not paying attention. <laughs> so. so with the current way that the fees are structured, do you still prefer like mostly development from ground up or you're looking at more like existing stuff? Is it less fees if it's existing? Oh, perfect. That's a great, great question. It is less fees if it's existing. Um, there's two ways it's going to be less fees uh, or three ways. The first is your water meter is already in place. <clears throat> so even if you build a bigger project, when they take that old water meter, they will give you a credit for it. So you have the water meter in place. You also sometimes have the ability to not do right-of-way work. So you can actually avoid a portion of the right-of-way work because there's a sewer line and a water line already in place. Um, so that can be a big benefit, depending upon how you have to do your underground, if the pole's on site or not on site, um, you might have to do underground work. A lot of times you do, but it might just be for your electric. The next thing, the existing square footage counts because the fees have already been paid to the school, to DIF, um, and to um, school and DIF have already been paid. Those are the two. And the water's been paid. So you don't have to pay those fees again. So say you have a 1500 square foot house, you tear it down, you build 4,000 square feet of home or unit, you're only gonna pay your diff fee on 2,500 square feet because the property was already bought in. So you have that as well. And then the last thing is, if you have an existing building, you are likely going to be able to avoid stormwater review and storm compliance because you have a certain amount of impermeable ground already on the property and you can manage it through a low impact development, which means you can keep your water on site with the existing plan 
because you are credited for the amount of coverage you already have. So let's say there's concrete in house and impermeable surface on 70% of the lot. You're going to build out the property. Let's say you're going to cover 85% of it. So there's 15% less. There's 15% left that's permeable. That 30% has to be funneled to that 15%. That is not difficult to do. But if you have a vacant lot that is 100% permeable and you go to build and you're going to reduce it down to only 15% permeable, 100% of that water has to get into 15% of the lot, that lot. That's going to require systems, design, and a full stormwater review because it will not be low impact development. It'll be high impact. And you're going to have a stormwater review uh, approval and a whole process on that. And that can take a whole year in the process of doing everything else to get that done. And it will also cost a lot of money to do all the work. So that is why my preference is to not buy vacant land. I prefer to buy stuff that's existing because it makes that permit so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh if you have a well, you can do uh this is what they do in Arizona. They drill wells that are hundred plus foot um feet deep to have the water funnel to those because they don't have very permeable soil. Um and they have issues with the water runoff all over Arizona. So that's a uh, my uh, my brother in law does that and it 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 does very well for him. <laughs> so cool. Any other questions? All right, everybody. Thank you for turning in. There are so many fees. There's a lot of fees there, Nate. Um, but it works. You just have to know about all of them. So so when people uh want to build uh something and they just think of the construction cost i i kind of chuckle <laughs> so thank you everybody for tuning in great time today and we will see you next week yeah very scary <laughs> have a good one guys cheers